Fuck. <laughs> Drop something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, good morning, afternoon, and evening. Welcome back to the Liberal Artist Podcast. Uh, I am your host, back from the shadow realm, uh, Bodio Papula. With me, I have uh, Kaylee Horowitz. It's me, Moon Moon Night Night. <laughs> and Andy Gibby Gibson. Uh, demoted from host to co-host again. No, I'll have my power. This isn't over, Spider-Man! I don't... Right franchise, wrong series. Oh, uh, fair. Right, it's like, not that I'm your boss, but it's like when your boss walks in and you're saying some shit about him, and he's just kind of like, oh. Oh, I've, I've done that, and like, oh yeah, I, I got the response of like, what were you saying? And I had to rely on all of my improv uh, skills from theater to just be like, oh, well, I was talking about her, and I was talking about her, and it was all... He knew exactly how I felt about him at that point, so it was kind of like, why am I trying this hard? Why? I gotta get out of here. It, it, was, it was very that, but at the same time, five minutes later, I was just like, I'm out of here in a month. Why do I care? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Proceeds because my life flip table. Because the destiny of my life is determined by LinkedIn recommendations. I guess. I don't understand how that thing works. I know I should. Good. But I, I don't. Am, I am not going to let you talk about LinkedIn for Me fucking neither. ten minutes. Fuck LinkedIn. <laughs> I refuse. Bo shits okay. on Twitter all the time. Like people Bo shit shots. on Instagram all the time. The worst social media, even with all of Facebook. Stealing your data mm. is linked in. It is the fakest piece of shit, and I will never respect it. Okay, people that treat LinkedIn like social media, that's a red flag for me, dog. I'm sorry. Y'all, 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 we're not doing this. We're not talking about LinkedIn. Stop it. Shout out to the it. Hustle Grind crew on LinkedIn for stop, all of my stop middle it. managers <laughs> in reality. God damn it. <laughs> that thing. It scares me. No, th- th- qu- qu- quit it! <laughs> then give us something to talk about before I go on a tirade about fucking Hustle Grind crew. Uh, Hashtag girl boss boss babe bitch queen, yes. Uh, I, I don't know what's happening. This is what happens when I, I leave for <laughs> a damn week. Just explain it as like the chaos realm. Or I just, like, ju- I, I, I think I'm still in the shadow realm and like I thought I got Pandora's out. Pandora's box got open. Fucking Seto Kaiba was like, actually, loser, get dunked on. And then I just, I just <laughs> got beat in the duel and I'm back here. <laughs> Welcome back. The fierceness of his bowl cut is like immaculate <laughs> on its fashionable level. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I don't know. Control me, baby. Before you got to put this leash on me I, I, like a I toddler. Hate that you. I don't. Oh my god! What's happening? I'm so, I'm so distraught. You know I'm what's so happening, Bo? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what's happening. Uh, uh, I'm so afraid of what you're about to say. I've I've played like because of my job and because of the life that I live now. I've played about fifty hours of Dungeons and Dragons in the last. 72 hours or so uh, and i've i've kind of lost my mind um i yeah i've got a, a different job than when we started this podcast hooray it, it's fun it's it's a good gig i went from a good gig to another good gig just yeah. one that doesn't feel like work yet still has health care which is surprising we we ran a uh, a special event at my job for a challenge dungeon where the whole thing was that like it's designed to you know, try to almost kill you. The whole thing is like, ha ha, I almost got you. Ha ha, I almost got you. Till the very end where I'm just like, now I'm really going to almost get you. Except for the cow level. I want to hear about the cow. I heard a snippet about the cow, but I want to know what happened about the cow. This cow was the most powerful boss I've ever seen in Dungeons and Dragons. We allowed the fans to vote on the NPC that they wanted as part of the first anniversary dungeon that we were doing. And of course, people being people on the internet selected the cow. Cow. Sure. Not any of the DM NPCs, not the succubi, not the really cool goblins or like badass water commissioners that we had. That's a thing. You won't believe me, but that's a thing. No, they selected the prized cow. Cows are homies. Cow. Our head DM made Ultra Mimsy, the incredible cow. This thing had 15 <laughs> sorcery points. This thing had Thunderstep. It had 
a modified version of Firestorm, a seventh level spell. It had a move called, and she shakes the earth, her hooves known only to be survived by the gods or something like that. Oh. Everybody died to the cow because nobody beats the cow. You little Damn. shits are trying to come up with your portable hole plus your bag of holding to explode the cow into a black hole. No! The cow prevails. I think once people like realize more and more that the bag of holding is this like, oh, we can just like collapse things within the pocket of space. Like, I feel like this is a thing that I've heard more DMs trying to like circumnavigate that like, no, you don't just get to throw everything into the bag and solve your problems that way. I uh, had to stop some players. I, I am a very I've known as a merciful DM and a very flexible DM. Uh, among he says players. humbly. <laughs> no, 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 no. I kind of wish I was meaner, but I just can't do it. But I, I had to stop them when they were just like, we're going to go into the final boss room and we're going to put the sphere of annihilation inside the bag of holding and we're going to instantly blow them up. And I just had to reach through the zoom window through my computer screen to theirs, gently put my hands on their shoulders and say, don't. Son, do you know what you're doing right now? Yeah, how would you do that? Because I don't want to talk about this. If, if, theoretically, <laughs> if you were to collapse a bag of holding and turn it into a black hole, a black hole mm. collapses at the speed of light. So the very instant the sphere of destruction touches the bag of holding, you would then destroy the entire planet. There would be no toss yes. it in the room like a hot potato and get out. You would blow up your planet into uh, compressed gravity and thus ending all of your characters in the campaign. Right? I mean, but the campaign was going to end one way or another. So yeah, you're, you're right. It's true. Go, go out on your own terms, you know? <laughs> I'm leaving and I'm taking all of reality with me. Wait, what? Ah! If they tried that, I would have just like gotten out my old kazoo that's shaped like a French horn, and I just would have played taps on it, and I would have your, closed. Your old kazoo that's shaped like a what? Uh, I have a kazoo that's shaped like a French horn because my mother loves me. Okay, we're stopping. <laughs> we're done. Um, and I just so, would have played taps no, and closed no, 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 the no, no, Zoom call. Some kids done, you're get done. a recorder. <laughs> Some kids play the trumpet. This kid gets a kazoo in the shape of a French horn. Uh, Not even a kazoo how at very that point. specific. <laughs> Doctor Strange just came out. Yeah, boy! Jesus. I'm sorry, that was very loud. <laughs> it was. Moon Knight just uh, ended. What do I do with my life now? Talk about bullshit with your friends. And Hell hopefully yeah, our lovely you're audience right. enjoys listening. I'm not going to watch Kenobi. I mean, maybe I'll watch Kenobi. You're going to watch Kenobi. I know you. I haven't you. cared about any of the Star Wars series, but I am actually here for the Marvel content. <laughs> Let me fucking drive the car, damn it. Stop taking the wheel. <laughs> meep, meep. Uh, <laughs> I want to stop at Jack in the Box. <laughs> no, it's gross. <laughs> You're right. So we, we, we put our head just together. We were like, hey, what's actually the difference between uh, the Marvel movies versus the Marvel TV shows, right? We have this big cinematic universe and we are nerds on the internet, so we have to talk about Marvel. We're, congr we're uh, contractually obligated. You know what I'm saying? It, this mm. will not be the last time, much to my <laughs> chagrin. <laughs> it was part of the terms and conditions by our internet service provider. It was baked right. in really, really small text. Sh shit's tattooed on my chest, Oh, unfortunately. Yeah, damn, like a soul-binding oh, contract, man. not just a contract contract. Yeah, you say like, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, so let's 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 talk about I think our main point of view is gonna be between Doctor Strange and Moon Knight, uh, because those are the ones that most recently came out. And mm -hmm. Moon Knight might be the only TV show that I've seen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is a big red warning sign that there will be spoilers. I am yeah. so sorry if you haven't gotten to either yeah. peace yet hey welcome to the liberal artist podcast we talk about the whole goddamn thing we 
don't give a fuck about spoilers. We don't have no like tiptoeing around right here. Dumbledore's dead. Deal yep. with it. it uh, Bruce Willis was dead the whole time. Welcome Yo. to the real world. We will try to let you know ahead of time if we're talking about spoilers. Because we're we respectful. Just- yeah, we're respectful, but sometimes we're just stupid and we have one brain cell. So We're aggressively <laughs> respectful. <laughs> so, Kaylee, you watched um, Doctor Strange. You are, I you did. are a resident Marvel expert. Yes. Um, just like overview, like. Five mile flyover. What'd you think about it? I and and uh, let me clarify. I'm MCU expert, not necessarily comics expert. I oh, would sure. like to delve more into those, but that is for another lifetime outside of grad school. <laughs> no, I I really enjoyed it because I'm a sucker for some good Sam Raimi content. I hate horror, but I do enjoy <laughs> Sam Raimi, and I hate horror more, mostly just because like I can't take it. I'm I'm a chicken. I I'm a scaredy little baby pants. Um, but Sam Raimi is fun. Like Evil yeah. Dead is a fucking good time. Funny, but also scary sometimes. Army of Darkness, fucking sick. And there's a lot of that, like, because this one's allowed to be horror a little bit as it was advertised as such. There's some really fun, like, jump scares, weird psychological kind of shit. And also some good, like, Sam Raimi comedy where it's just, like, nice and juicy and awkward. Uh, like a Spider-Man trilogy, <laughs> like some good stuff. I will say, though, having just come off of Moon Knight, something about this one did feel like not that it was bad in my opinion, but it felt underwhelming. Ooh, what do you mean? There was a lot of rewrite and a lot of reshooting going on with this movie to the point where even the cast were sort of like, we don't even know what the hell we're keeping anymore. Like. What we movie don't know is this? what we're doing. What yeah, exactly? We know we're when we're filming with each other, what's going on, but like we don't know if this is going to get kept. We don't know even if we're reshooting things or doing new like film shoot. We don't know if this is going to stay. Nobody knows. That's the sign of a good production, typically, when you don't know what's happening. This movie lost like director once, a couple of like. I think head producers twice. I oh, a goodness. lot of things happened on our way to Doctor Strange to Multiverse of Madness. You know, I was gonna I was gonna credit at some point the well oiled machine that is the Disney uh, <laughs> Marvel movie cranker. They still live in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, I guess not. No, I basically again spoilers. We are launched in media res to a different universe where a different Doctor Strange is helping a young America Chavez uh, escape from something that is hunting her because it wants her multiversal traveling power. So, like, if you don't know this character, like, great, you get to be introduced to her kind of just like immediately as as our Doctor Strange is figuring out who she is. Mm. Um, And it's this like, oh, my God, of course, she could travel the multiverse. We've got to. Help her control her power because she's a young teenager. She doesn't know how to control her power. <laughs> Wanda, you're a powerful witch. Won't you help us? Oh, I could use her power to go find my lost sons. Which I will say, the like opening shot of her like dreaming about her boys and then waking up. It's so, it is so fucking sad. A wa- Wanda vision left me broken emotionally and right. I almost started immediately crying again when I saw we were back in like the boys' bedroom in Westview, and like <laughs> it hurts, it hurts so bad. But we set up Wanda to be our antagonist this movie. There was a okay. lot of like, is she an alliance with Doctor Strange or is she the villain? She's the villain in this. She wants America's power. Um, right. Man. Man. Yeah, and so it's a lot of, like, keep away through the multiverse, um, mostly in, like, one other reality with the Illuminati, with uh, Ooh. Patrick Stewart as Professor Magneto. Uh, Professor X? Or not Professor Magneto, I'm sorry, Pro- wow. Professor X. Wow! I, no. Professor I, Magneto! 
you know. I was thinking of two different things at once. We are just... bur- we are burning your contract, madam. Bo, she said she specified MCU. She specified MCU. Yes. You can't hold her at all. I fault. did specify MCU. Ah, prof- uh, yes, Professor Magneto Professor, who Professor fought in X. Poland. I think it's because World I War always II. just I was waiting. I want more confirmation that like we're going to see more X Men stuff. No, in it's these because movies. you ship them. I know you. I mean, maybe that a little bit too. I but... know you. Because you're me. You and I are not so different. We get we get the Illuminati with uh, Charles Xavier having yep. it where at one point this universe is Doctor Strange was also a part of it. We get Captain Carter is in the flesh. Well, that's and good. she's gorgeous. Well, yeah. Um, And Mr. Fantastic and like a, a couple other folks where it's just like, oh, my God, these people, except Wanda's on a fucking maniacal rampage. So right. there's like invincible levels of like superhero slaughter going on. And it, that it's that sort of like, oh fuck me. This is like terrifying. Kill! You know, so it's it's this like she's our antagonist. We're running from her until finally America is able to get her to kind of have this like reflective conversation of the self. And then we're kind of left back at square one where she she goes away. She like locks herself away. And America goes to train at Comertage, and like but she'll be back for Avengers. Oh yeah, five, no, well, six. She'll be back. We know. I I still believe that they're setting up for a Young Avengers with all of these like younger characters that we keep getting yeah. introduced to. But coming from that, after just seeing Moon Knight, which like I I will save for a little bit later on as we try to summarize that one, but. It felt underwhelming. Like, it felt yeah. like, okay, great. We're establishing some new things that we now know exist within this multiverse. Like, we're here's finally a character that is exploring the multiverse in the MCU and what that means and what that means for us as viewers. But after some of the shit that we're beginning to get set up for in the Marvel series, it felt kind of restrained to me that more of that wasn't starting to bleed into the cinematic franchise you know like yeah. because and i i do have issue with this writer oh my god he's the same guy that worked on loki michael waldron you hear that mr waldron <laughs> yeah hear that michael i just i want to have a chat sir yeah i want to talk because we come for that ass mike there were so many moments there were so many moments in this movie where these actors are doing everything they can to salvage a performance out of some of these lines. Like, there's your Marvel quippiness, sure. Sure. But there are some things that's like, you wrote that and you thought this would this would be tonally right? This would be appropriate? We get America's backstory in this weird, like, utopic dimension that they end up in. It's it's like the memory shop, like you stand in front of it and it like stores a memory for you sort of thing. Like that's how it mm-hmm. advertised that we get like a flashback between Strange and uh, Christine, uh, who who he's like having. This is a nice movie where we finally get a resolution between him and her and she's mm-hmm. allowed to move on and he's allowed to like heal from that, which is nice. Um, So his memory is about Christine. America's is like this flashback of how she even got launched into the multiverse and separated from her mom's. <laughs> And in the comics, it's a lot more complicated. Sure. Well. It's it's like hella more complicated. She's on the run. That That is clear. Like, that's still the basis of what her character is and, like, trying to make the world she lands in a better place. But, like, the movie went, yes, my, my mothers and I, we lived in, like, blissful paradise. Everything was perfect. But I, I couldn't control my power. She's, like, picking flowers. Mm-hmm. And then this... It's just a bee. It is just a bug. It just kind of shows up, like flies into frame, <laughs> scares her. And then she blinks out of reality. Por- she opens a portal <laughs> that her mothers get sucked into, and then she does as well. Huh? <laughs> and then the, and then they and then it's this like, and since then I've lost them and I've been trying to find out where they've gone to. And I'm like, you want us to take that seriously? What? If you're not able to control yourself with the bee, right? You do not deserve the world-changing powers 
Like, <laughs> but uh, the wow. comics at least this is like there's this genocidal like being coming after you. A so genocidal yeah. being? Oh no! <laughs> but like th- this, I was like, what? What the actual <laughs> fuck did you want me to think of that? I'm sorry. Uh, what? You, um, our true like, enemy. Dr. B. <laughs> Dr. B. B movie canon in the MCU. Playing it out there. Jerry uh, Seinfeld <laughs> asking this little girl if she likes jazz. <laughs> and then she. <laughs> but no. Hey, so, look at my perfect record, report card. It's all B's. <laughs> I would jump universes too. Rips the universe asunder. I have issues with Michael Waldron, and especially because he was a writer on Loki. And Loki also had a very troubled production because mm. there was some conflict mm. between direction and writing. Really? Uh, from, from what I've from what I've heard. Because the series to me, I loved Loki so freaking much mm. until the last episode. Ooh. Until it really was this like this out of all of the other options that you have set up as possible contenders. This is what you went with? Tell him. Dumbass? Like, Yo. <laughs> God, Kaylee's never angry. This is new. Uh, let her have it, man. I'm enjoying it. Me too. Me too. No, when I found out this is the same guy that they brought into this movie, I'm like, oh, God, that explains so much. <laughs> it's so close. <laughs> it's so close to being really satisfying. And it just drops the ball in the last chunk um, or like sets up what could be a really exciting idea and doesn't go for it. I I have a lot of issue with that, whereas Moon Knight is this really like like WandaVision was pioneering Mm -hmm. the space of Marvel content as serial on television. It's really refreshing. It's really exciting. Yeah. Uh, and especially the perspective that Moon Knight gives us of a part of the world that we have not seen in Marvel really, like, at all. Egypt. Yay! <laughs> a place where not white people live. And Britain. And Britain. <laughs> Everybody's cogni as hell. It's so exotic. People really wow. talk like this. I'm here at the gift shop. And <laughs> would you like a pharaoh Would you like bo- a hippopotamus? <laughs> would, would you like a pharaoh bottle of water? A bottle of water. That's a little metal club. <laughs> I, I bottled this water down on the river uh, of the Nile. You, 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 you leave uh, Stephen Grant alone. He's just trying to mind his business. That's all. <laughs> I'm not making fun of him. I'm not making fun of how like every British person in American media is just bottle water. Bottle water. Bottle water. Everybody's cogny as hell. Or um, their peers Brosnan. And that's it. There's, there's uh, either posh or cockney. <laughs> Nobody respects Jordy, damn it! The best of all the accents! I did hear in an interview that Benedict Cumberbatch and Elizabeth Olsen did, uh, it was like, which do you think is harder, an American to learn a British dialect or a uh, British person to learn an American dialect? And, and Ben was like, immediately, it's the American to British. Like, it's so, it's so tricky. And I've been called out for my American accent, but like, American to British is so hard to pull off convincingly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, seamless transition. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Moon Knight. Let's do a quick uh cap. Sailor Moon, right? Oh uh, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, Warrior <laughs> of the Moon. It's it's just <laughs> five straight minutes of like bathing in light with Oscar Isaac. God, if Oscar Isaac had a fucking shoujo magical girl transformation sequence in the middle of moon night look they kind of did magical girl you just needed a couple of like you just needed a couple of hearts here and there and like change the music with like his his little moon blade spitting behind him (laughs) yeah and then somebody please you have like somebody who knows how to vfx this go do it backlit naked ass um (laughs) oscar isaac and then the raps like (laughs) all over him and then they like <laughs> shrink and spin into the crescent moon. That'd be so tight. I would have been like, this is the best piece of media ever created. <laughs> Honestly, pretty good. Pretty good. But uh I'll 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 do the uh, Yeah, let's let's talk about moon let's talk about Moon Knight. Do a little do a little cap. Moon Knight and pretty much all the other Marvel series that I have uh, watched here and there on Disney Plus. It's it goes setup trauma. 
yeah. and mm-hmm. big battle mm-hmm. at the end. <laughs> I saw a great meme that was like Marvel Phase 5 and like photoshopped letters from all of the titles from things. Y'all need therapy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, the whole thing is about like a guy who does not realize he has a disassociative identity uh, disorder uh, and that his other life or lives uh, <gasps> have made a deal with an Egyptian god to become essentially Marvel Batman, but with one parent left, I guess. Yeah, invincible Marvel Batman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be my avatar. Yeah. DC's power is money, uh, and then uh, Marvel's power is getting a degree in Egyptology. Like, yeah, <laughs> and yet the Egyptology is more powerful than, <laughs> than billions of dollars. No, I thought, uh, I thought Moon Knight from beginning to end is fascinating the way that yeah. it builds its story in that the whole episode one is showing you a little bit at a time without ever showing you a lot or fully letting you in on everything. But it's not going to be confusing to the extent of something like, you know, The cliche example is Christopher Nolan's Memento, where it's a story that is both showing a scene that's moving forward in time and showing a scene that happens in the future and then it goes forward, backward, forward, backward, forward. It's not like confusing in that way. It's just like, oh, shit, you just woke up and we're seeing this from your perspective. Why you're in Switzerland, bud? What what you doing there? Oh, you're killing. Oh, you didn't know that you were killing. Well, yeah, how'd you get to Switzerland neat. and back to London in like two days? And like it's Europe. Whole like village. the whole thing is the size of Texas. They're fine. <laughs> but I mean, you're not wrong. I'm, I'm not. Take that, Europe. I'm, I'm really not. Like, I'm pretty sure fucking Lubbock all the way to Dallas is more than Russia to <laughs> Paris. No, Fair but enough. Anyways, uh, <laughs> the whole thing is that uh, it's sort of the superhero origin but it kind mm-hmm. of skips it all, and I respect that, because it's kind of like, this is you. Oh, I don't know, is it me? Yeah, it's me. Oh, no, this is a bit of trouble for me. Uh, but <laughs> uh, I, I think it's Are we so- married? <laughs> Why don't I remember that? You're beautiful. Oh, right, that's pretty. All oh, right. Oh, right, this is not knackered right here. Uh, <laughs> not knackered uh, Steven yeah. don't you dare kiss my fucking wife <laughs> you're getting divorced shut up uh, no but what I like about it is that it's a show that spends so much more time on the development of characters first and the big mm. plot of world blow up uh, second like it, it spends so much more time versus character development in Marvel movies is often secondary to the mm-hmm. big plot device, you know, the big thing. Oh no, the big thing's going to happen. The the focus in Moon Knight is so much more on like okay, why exactly are we dealing with each other inside of the same body? Where did this trauma root from? How do we overcome this together when we're also the opposite kind of people? Uh and Building that and mysteries being revealed here and there and getting back to the source of things. My favorite kind of episode of TV outside of like the stellar bottle episodes where people get stuck in like an elevator and it's almost always like the writer's best work somehow. Uh, This Mm -hmm. this is much more of the like, let's go through your brain episode Mm -hmm. of like, let's look at memories together. They did it in Gravity Falls. They did it in The Good Place. They did it uh, in a really great way, making fun of all the Sigmund Freud stuff in The Venture Brothers. Who, <laughs> the Venture Brothers being the best at writing. Who would have guessed about that? Who would have guessed? Venture Bros fucking slaps. But I think they did just a terrific job of that uh, with uh, the penultimate episode of Moon Knight of when Steven and Mark go back together through their memories together mostly marks but a little bit of stevens to figure out how they can become a balanced self is really really nice stuff it reminded me a lot of uh netflix's living with yourself which is kind of a similar concept of there's two paul rudds now and they gotta figure out what they're gonna do sci-fi versus superhero stuff but oscar isaac really knocked it out of the park 
Uh, the writing was solid. His acting was great. Uh, his cohorts. Such a damn good performance. Yeah, really, like, honestly, excellent stuff. Also, I love everyone that's like, never in my life did I think I would see Ethan Hawke in a Marvel property, and yet here we are. And I didn't even realize it was him for a little while. Right? I don't know how I didn't. <laughs> Ethan Hawke's great at acting. I just didn't know if he'd be great at Marvel acting, and yet I didn't he's like just his like, raspy ba bad guy voice. That's fair. That's mm. fair. But he had that good smug bad guy haircut. Oh yeah. Like mm. the haircut is what pulls it all together. If he mm. had just been like like having a nice 50s crew cut or whatever, it wouldn't have done it. But it's like <laughs> almost to the shoulders, like the full on Lego person hair. Would he have been more intimidating if he kept the mustache throughout the entire series? Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know. You Frickin' open that entire show with this man breaking glass and putting it in his shoes and choosing to walk out on that. And I went, nope. I, <laughs> putting, you, what? Putting them, what? Putting them in fucking Crocs, Kaylee. I was <laughs> disgusted. It would have been great if walking across everywhere, you saw a little glass go through the holes of the Crocs every time. <laughs> <laughs> and it just throws oh, up a no. Crocs logo at the Angry. end. Angry. No, but anyways... Uh, I... Oh man, that was the whole joke all along, wasn't it? That it was a crocodile. Oh no. god, yeah, damn yeah. it. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da oh no. You know what? I was saying good shit about Moon Knight. It can go fuck itself now. <laughs> what I've noticed about a lot of the Marvel movies versus uh, a lot of the Marvel TV that I've watched is just mm. the difference of time. Mm. The for yeah. the last fifteen years or so. The entire Hollywood movie making and uh, television production industry has flipped where it's just like we can no longer make as much money on movies that take their time. We have to go big to get the big successes. We got to blow up something. We got to have a kaiju fight. We got to we got to boom. We've got to what? What is he doing here? Crossover. Versus baby ever, bing baby boom. Boss. Ever since I I, I don't want to be cliche, but ever since like The Wire and then Mad Men and then Breaking Bad and seasons one through four of five ish of The Walking Dead, people just went, ah oh, shit, the money's in TV. The smart is in TV. You're not going to be smart or seen as smart if you don't do good TV. And the whole thing just flipped well, on I itself. Well, I don't I don't know if that tracks because um with the Marvel properties. I think the biggest difference between the, the, the movies, now that we've recapped everything, we can open the floor to like every um, mm -hmm. Marvel movie, every Marvel Everybody. TV show. <laughs> I think the aspect of time is super important, right? Because the TV yeah. shows, they tend to be like, quote unquote, mini series. Six hours. Yeah, which isn't a real thing. It's just to induce FOMO. It, it, it's like, okay, here's two movies or two and a half movies mashed together because you talk about how you, or you mentioned that movies don't have enough time, but movies, you know, used to be an hour and a half right now. Yeah. They're like three or four hours. Marvel is the most aggressive, like producer of, Hey, plan your entire day around sitting in a movie theater for four and a half hours. Just to see Spider-Man swing. You know I can I agree mean? with you there. However, Marvel has so much shit that it has to pack in now because of yep. what it's done to itself that the three You've hours... You've done this to yourself. You, you done <laughs> did this to yourself. You bought everything and now you can't fit it. You're like that meme of the guy holding too many limes. And he's <laughs> how like... How do I hold all of these movies? Yeah, how do I hold all these properties? <laughs> I was listening to Kaylee. I haven't seen the uh, new Doctor Strange myself, but I, as I listened to her talk about it, I was just like, hmm, that's too much shit. They're going to make right. that movie three hours long and it's too much shit, and they're going to have to fit more shit in the middle of the credits, right. then they're going to put more shit at the end of the credits, and after your ushers are begging you to leave so that they can do their thankless job, there's more shit in, like, the pamphlet. Look at the bottom of your popcorn bucket. Guess what? It's Darkhawk. Well, I bet you didn't expect him. <laughs> they just have so much stuff. that they, 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 Three hours is too short. 
Strange has one post credit scene, like after the like fun graphics credits, and then one mm-hmm. end credit. But that one's more of a joke. Uh, it's funny. I enjoyed it because it's like, ah, this character, fun, fun sideline character, and it it doesn't really set up much, at least for sure. me, because this character looks like somebody that I'm like, I don't think we've seen you before, have we? But you certainly look like you could come out of Guardians Three or Thor: Love and Thunder, or maybe even Eternals, if we're still touching that right now. Sure, no, we're yeah. not. Etern- <laughs> Eternal sucks. Nobody liked yeah, it. Yeah, good luck with that, right there. So what about in terms of the vibe of Marvel movies versus TV shows? Do y'all think those are any different or what? what, what oh, it, yeah. The... Yeah. I think really? it depends on who is trying to direct and how. Yes. Mm. Yes. Uh, as well as your writing team, because like the performance quality across the board and the production value across the board is fantastic. Sure. Like, it it's, really is that like it's Disney, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that's not the concern. It really does come down to the. How are we using our time and in what way? And mm. I, I think cut, like maybe the, a part of my problem with sort of like the I'm sorry to keep calling you out, dude. Michael Waldron's writing is like Get we're fucked, spending, Mike. We're, well, we're spending a lot of time in places that I would assume based on the structure of this show or this movie are going to be relevant. Right. Slash the opposite is that. Why are we spending time with this when I don't quite see the connection yet? Unless you're about to do something very clever and like, oh, oh, it was this. So all along. is it a matter of I know when I watch Marvel movies, the thing that always pisses me off is when um think back to like episode one or mm. two. I think it's episode two of um Moon Knight when yeah. they like build, 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 tension, 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 tension. They're in the museum, they summon another jackal, yeah. he's got the suit on, and then they hard cut. Hey, what's up with your suit, man? That's a little funny. Why are you in a three-piece suit? Ha ha ha! Like every Marvel property does that. We're sure. in the middle of the scene. We're in the middle of this really tense scene. They're like, and now we're telling jokes. Ha ha! Is it yeah. like a? And I hate it. Is it like a situation of that, or is it's, it a situation I don't of mind the shifts? And like I, again, I agree. Sometimes it's not always like the most timely, but mm-hmm. I don't mind the tonal shifts. So long as you're going to commit to the bit sort of thing. It, where, and Moon yeah. Knight kind of gets to be cheeky in that way. Oh, you're cheeky, bruv. Oh, oh, oh you're feeling cheeky, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> that I really enjoy are like the things that are said in the first episode that do feel like those throwaway jokes. Where like the little girl, like he explains what the field of reeds is. And the uh-huh. little girl he's talking to dead ass looks at him and goes, how did it feel when you got rejected? Where it's this like, oh, what the fuck, you little shit. Yeah. Cut to episode five and you go, oh, no. (laughs) You dummy, Um, you got rejected from the field of reeds because your soul wasn't balanced, bitch. As as if there wasn't enough emotional heartbreak in that episode already. Like like suddenly there's seeds in there that have been planted that's this like, oh, oh, okay. Which... Again, I was expecting something like Loki to do more of because there was a lot of really interesting stuff that they were playing hmm. with in Loki, um, not just character identity exploration, but like mechanics, uh, organizations, idea like concepts and ideas. Like if we're saying that the Infinity Stones are paperweights to the TVA, then like what else is possible? Right. And yet somehow one these characters have still like one of them has still decided to like betray the entire multiverse and say yeah fuck this um and two we have yet to have any confirmation about like the aftermath of that series on the rest of the world and like maybe there's that like one oh you don't know that there's a tva anyway so you wouldn't know that your universe has been split into the full multiverse it's supposed to let be me, whatever but let like, me interrupt you because i don't want to get lost in the weeds of yes plot. yes i mostly want to talk about like the vibe and the feel yeah. of the movies right and what I was going to say, mm-hmm. to kind of wrap up what I'm trying to get at, but and also being bogged down by my problems with the show, um, <laughs> is that cool. like they spend so much time exploring a lot of really interesting stuff. And mm-hmm. then for most of it to kind of amount to this, what? Like after all of that, we could be clever with it. Like you have the trickster god and we could be clever with these things. And instead you are playing literally into the tropes. 
and it leaves a bad taste in the mouth. So do you think on average the TV shows do a better job of guiding their own plots than the movies? Or is it or do they or do the plot lines feel similar or I for me, it's hard to say because a lot of these are currently having to deal with the ramifications of COVID production. Mm-hmm. Like Fal- yeah. Falcon and the Winter Soldier was going to have a virus outbreak and they had oh, to well. cut that <laughs> uh, and and regroup and reframe some things. So I forgive them for a little bit of the like jerkiness of that series, which is otherwise quite good at like. Here we're really getting to develop these characters in a really fan fat bleh, I can't talk. Fantastic story setup and like stakes for both of them where they kind of both get to be back in front of the like center of attention instead of just the sidekicks. Um mm-hmm. it's just the story is really jerky, but I'm willing to forgive that because of mm-hmm. like, <laughs> you know, global circumstances. Um I think WandaVision and Moon Knight are still the like golden children of like how to use the TV formula. Like the you are making a series. It's this it's like double the content of a movie, but like you have this affordance of the medium and the way it's presented to work better for you than if you were sitting down in a movie theater. And as much as I love the cheekiness in Hawkeye, I feel like that one is also like this could have been a movie like I I love Kate Bishop, but like this could have been a movie. Gibby, you were you have you've had some on the tip of your tongue for a second. I think that the medium of TV uh, is an area where most major media companies v- versus film are willing to allow so much more time, production, and and flexibility and freedom for writers to go crazy and whoa Mm -hmm. big reveal wow nobody ever knew that before what blowing your mind no uh but for a company as big as disney to essentially let go of the reins just a tiny bit is significant because i don't think there was a possible way to make a Wanda and Vision movie in any similar circumstance inside of the medium of film as they could have in television. And some people might see it kind of as gimmicky with what they did with moving each episode through a different uh, era of television and in a different style. You know, the Bewitched episode, the Full House episode, the Modern Family episode. I don't think that uh, that same idea could have been successfully done as a movie, even if it was kind of along the lines of like the last action hero or other odes to movie making and such like that. And I don't think Disney would have taken that sort of risk that is associated with that because experimental films in any sort of way, while they are critically appreciated, will never make the money that the big blockbusters do it's why most marvel movies are the same they may not be interesting but you know exactly what you're going to get when you go in there so despite the fact that something like dr strange multiverse of your mom uh is (laughs) different uh and it has a different tilt to it because of its direction and everything you still know what to expect The tone is going to be relatively the same unless it's like the end of a 10 year long building thing, Infinity War, whatever. Television just has so much more flexibility of just like, ah, shit, they already paid the subscription fee and then they'll forget to cancel that or whatever. So even if they don't like it, it doesn't matter. But it gives people the freedom to make something really creative in essentially a cinematic universe and now TV universe that hasn't really been very interesting since Thanos got snapped, I guess, you know? Yeah. And I I, I respect that. I agree mostly. Yeah. It's still Marvel. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. And I, I have to give the people credit, right? Whether it's the same folks writing all of these properties or all these like TV shows and movies, which sounds like hell, 
or they just have the formula figured out so well that all of them can feel. I don't want to use the word homogenous, but I can't really think of another word. This felt like, again, this felt just like two or three Marvel movies slapped together. It was nice to have more time with our protagonist. Mm. I feel like some of that time could have been spent with some other characters. <laughs> Layla! But yeah. whatever. But the things that bothered me about this show were the same things that bothered me about every Marvel movie that I've seen. Tell me more. The bad, the bad guy is like, I'm pretending to be a good person. Relate to me. Look at this good community. But I also lied and I kill people. Ha ha. I'm unequivocally evil, but I want you to think I'm coming from a good place. Okay. Hey, space laser. That's how it ends. Oh, fucking God damn it. <laughs> I do battle. Yeah. Every, everybody's snarky. Everybody's quirky. It's like, why? <laughs> but also, to be fair, I don't think we've had like a Marvel kaiju battle yet. So there That's you fair. go. Ka the kaiju battle was sick. I don't like. <laughs> we've had tall Scott Lang. Now get ready for big crocodile lady. Big croc lady. <laughs> big bird. <laughs> uh, um, but like, I think, and this is super, super duper spoilers for Moon Knight again, <gasps> but we've already talked about the whole goddamn thing. So why am I even saying this? Um, I, they introduced in episode three that, hey, there's another dude in his head. I do not like this. It's shit writing to be in your final action scene to say, and then he blackouts and then the good guys win. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't get to do that. He should have, you can black out and then you could show the third personality, right? Kicking ass and doing everything. And then they're like, what the fuck was that? And we don't have to talk about it because the, the viewer just saw it. You can't black out. Now the bad guy is beaten. Now we <laughs> seal the big lady. And it, that, that's stupid. That's whack. That's lame. We ran out of money. I don't know how we yeah, did exactly. it. That's what it reads as, right? It I think there was something that happened with the production value, like as right. far as like effects and that sort of thing. Because a lot of uh, the Marvel shit posting group I'm in was like, there's not a lot of Moon Knight in this Moon Knight, you there's know? There's no Moon Knight. <laughs> um, slight nerd rant. Take yourself back to the schoolyards of the yonder year of 2004 <laughs> when um, Sam Raby's, I think the first Spider Man might have come out. Uh, the by second then. one had just come out. The second one, yeah. second one had just come out, right? So the Marvel machine wasn't quite what it was. Nope. And it was not mainstream to like superheroes. No. So Accurate. a group, yeah, the group of kids would always ask the question it's like, all right, are you Marvel or DC? Um, I was DC because every fucking Marvel, every other fucking Marvel superhero is an immortal god. And that's not fun. Hmm. You know what I mean? It's oh, like. Yeah. Thor is a literal god and is literally immortal, right? It, it, Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl's awesome. Actually, she's an Omega level mutant and she's a fucking god. Deadpool. Deadpool's kind of cool. Actually, he has the strongest heal factor and he can teleport and he can walk through hammer space and he can bury gods. I'm like, fuck this shit, bro. I, I lost all interest in Moon Knight the Hero when he gets stabbed by like six dudes and he's like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> it's like what oh so there's no danger here random You're bullshit fine. go <laughs> right <laughs> the danger of moon knight is emotional trauma not yeah. bullets <laughs> i'm it's just very sad disorder. as much as i really love like the story that we did get where it's more focused on like them coming together over this one case of of um like we have to stop them from freeing amit I was mm -hmm. really hoping we were going to get more of that, like, supernatural vampire hunter side of Moon Knight right. in this season. Here's another Because we opened it with, like, the werewolf Egyptian jackal mythology. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. And I was like, oh, we're starting here, and we're obviously going to have to resolve this by the end of this season. But, like, ooh, is there going to be more spooky stuff in the meantime? Woo! Nope, emotional trauma. Yeah, which, I mean, is kind of spooky, too, but in a different way. <laughs> But to go back to what I was saying, I have the same issue with like 
heroes like Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch. Doctor Strange could do literally anything. Like literally anything, everything, if anything goes bad, bad in any movie where he's involved, it's his fault because he can just fix it. Right. It, 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 Scarlet Witch. He can't powers, get his medical license back. Got him. Got him. No, <laughs> Scarlet Witch's powers, because they I, I guess it comes from when they didn't want to say, oh, she's a mutant. Her powers are whatever the plot needs them to be. Hmm. She could just do whatever in the situation. You know what I mean? And they oh, have a they hard time. experimented on her. Hydra. Oh, God. Oh, actually, God. She's, she's a witch. Uh, she's, yeah, she's, she's actually she's just straight up magic. Witch. Oh, right. fuck. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, you can't do that. Um, but we haven't put uh, Charles and the X-Men in this universe yeah, we yet, so she's not a mutant. Not we yet. Can't call, we can't call them mutants yet. We haven't bought Fox. And it's like. Uh, I mean, now we have, but now we have. They, they live in a different universe. I think. Right. I think my issue with the Marvel big problem is yeah. that there's so much mythos going on now that it's only good when you can shrink it down to one. Make it isolate it because yeah. we we have to deal with the fact that one, Infinity War and Endgame, people just died for five years I, that's a big thing they kind of walk that off though <laughs> they do a good job of being like yeah that happened anyway. yeah i mean they try to deal with some of that like that's how our government post- dealt with covid yeah Facts. no they they try to deal with some of that like emotional trauma and like how do nations rebuild from that in falcon and winter soldier yeah. but mm-hmm. like it, again, in this sort of shakeup of how do we make this feasible, some of that gets lost. Like in even inflation. even even in Spider Man, they were just like, and yeah. now we're back in high school. <laughs> the moment where they just <laughs> brought back into the court. Is so it's so funny though. That's <laughs> not the big shit. Here's here's the full <laughs> bullshit that is popped upon us. Whatever. Everybody died for like five years. It's cool. No, Egyptian gods are real. Norse gods are real. If we don't oh, see dude, something, dude, 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 I know dude, dude. it's a comic problem, but like they could have produced <laughs> things a little, and it's just gonna get stupider till yeah. Jesus comes through the portal. Yeah, no, and those Buddha are comes those are to, gods. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'm Jesus, man. Those are gods, lowercase G. Jesus they're, they're still was big in J. Marvel Comics at one point. I he was. Shit you not? Dead no, every Jesus. every comic book, every every. I, I I have to take that one away from you because every comic book ever pulls from whatever pop pantheon they can and they're like but 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 god though <laughs> big g still exists big g this is why the boys is good because the only mention because there is no of, god no it the only mention is when like there's profiteering youth pastors trying to steal everybody's money when it turns out uh that superheroes are made by chemical corporations and not blessed by God, and they're just trying to take <laughs> everybody's money in like a full-on church revival. Like maybe your babies will have laser vision, but only if God loves you. Johnson and Johnson presents Baby Powder Man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I I think what you were saying about like there needs to be like for all of this thing that exists in this universe. Like, all right, okay, we get it to make a series work to be able to take time and just boil down the necessary components and figure out where we can explore that without having to worry about the rest of whatever the fuck is going on. Like Moon Knight works because this is an origin story for a character that hasn't existed in this universe yet. And so we get to follow them through this journey in this pocket that has really not been touched as strongly as other areas. WandaVision, we have some context coming in that like, yeah, she's going down a bit of a spiral. Her husband's dead, but we're figuring things out along the way. We're being reintroduced to things that we've maybe seen before. Even if you haven't, it's not crucial enough to know that this is Jimmy Wong who learned close up magic after watching Scott Lang do some dumb little trick. But like it's it's allowed to build that microcosm into its own thing that could then feed back into the bigger picture. So I guess my question for the table is, is that a concept or idea better equipped for the movies or better equipped for the television show? For the most part, I will say television because television as a medium in today's modern age of what 
production studios want out of TV and want out of movies because of what makes money, television will always be superior now that people mm-hmm. take it seriously. However, yeah. I think there's one guy, based on my experience watching Marvel stuff, maybe two, that can actually pull off character arcs while balancing the big and all the other stuff that's happening all the time. One is Taika Waititi. He showed that he can focus on character while there's fireworks going on in the background with Thor Ragnarok, which I will say, still, in my opinion, is the most successful of character development and big spectacle balance. Eh. I'm not going to say it's the best one. I just think from that perspective, it does it. God, I can't wait for Love and Thunder. That's why I trust him. That's why it's the only Marvel movie that I've been interested in in about Big three Portman. years outside of <laughs> Big Portman. Big Portman. <laughs> Padme. <laughs> Padme, what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> Muscle mommy Natalie Portman. I'm ready for it. I, I, I'm ready to be stepped upon. But anyways, uh, the other one uh, is James Gunn. Uh, who is the only guy who's made both a good DC movie and a good Marvel movie. It's a tight track record to hold, honestly. (laughs) It's honestly pretty tough. He can make a raccoon emotional. He can make Peacemaker into an incredible television series. He can do it all. Anything else, you check any of the other directors, maybe Sam Raimi once in a while. I don't trust them to get the job done. I trust them to entertain me and turn my brain off for about three hours and then go, Oh my gosh, did you see that reference to Gabagool, man? Oh, he was in a limited run comic series from the 70s. Oh, I love Gabagool, man. I can't wait till they he have... showed up in the space laser. It was Yeah, right. they're going to have Joe Pesci. They're going to have Joe Pesci play Gabagool, man. And it's going to be so sick. <laughs> it's me, Gabagool, man. Bada bing. <laughs> End credits. Stop this joke. <laughs> Please get is me it, off this train. Part of me is like, I want Gabagool Man, but I also just nope. want to imagine no. Howard the Duck. <laughs> no. We don't need any more Howard the Duck. We had a Howard Aww. the Duck and we were sad. I wasn't sad. <laughs> <laughs> now I am. That's it. No more Mr. Nice Duck. You all are saying that the, the movies and the TV shows feel different. Right. Different, but the same. Cool. I'm glad we got (laughs) absolutely nowhere for an hour. The the whole thing is that the movies are 100% Marvel and the TV is about 65% Marvel. Mm -hmm. Kaylee, uh, we're about to say something. I am. Well, I'm one. I'm very curious to see what happens because there's some exciting buzz going around that now that Disney has brought all of the like Netflix series under its catalog that we're actually going to get the, like, more mature Avengers-related content, uh, because there's sort of that, like, hey, Eternals, that that was fucking Blade. What? We're, we're bringing him back? And, and like, Black Knight? Like, what? <laughs> it was, was about to go on. We just got Moon Knight? Hello? So there's this sort of question of, like, are we going to be allowed to, like, take the reins off a little bit more Mm -hmm. and and sort of run in a different direction because james gunn taking guardians the way he did was a big gamble at the time because it's that like this is one of the more crass unknown and just bizarre collection of heroes to focus on right so i'm curious to see if like having a separate like pocket library in disney plus now that they have parental controls like pin restricted age stuff are we going to get more of that and what's that going to do for the look of the franchise? But one thing that I haven't mentioned yet as far as the conversation between TV and film is stuff like what if where each episode mm. is allowed to be a one shot. Like, right. do we th- like would the movies ever be allowed to do that now that we know that these different universes exist? Would any uh. of these be allowed to be a one shot that we just don't come back to? And maybe we see like, oh, Okay, like here's I things from the one we're following, but like so. I, I don't no. know, I don't know where that's stuff like that profitable. fits into this picture. <laughs> I, I, that, uh, yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen because, like we were saying, the machine's a little too big. Mm. So every movie is gonna have to connect to every every. The movie is big. How I seem, and this is what's going to be what separates them, right? The TV shows I think are gonna get to be their own little thing. 
Mm-hmm. Be like, here's Moon Knight and here's Iron Fist. They made Iron Fist. Holy shit, they made a lot of these. <laughs> here's um, Johnny. Right. I'm trying to think of full disclosure. Most of my knowledge of Marvel superheroes comes from Marvel versus Cap, the Marvel versus Capcom fighting game series, <laughs> which um, has deeper story than many of the movies. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Yeah. Take that. Mega Man fucking. I don't know. <laughs> Beautiful Joe kicked your ass and it had more emotional development than Eternals ever there will. It is. Gibby, Gibby's funnier than me. Patrick, say that again. Gibby's funnier than me. Gibby's funnier than me. Gibby's funnier than me. <laughs> Gibby's funnier than me. I I think going forward, that's going to be the separator, right? The movie, the TV shows get to be like their own little things. Mm -hmm. And then the movies will connect all the movies. And then the actors who pull the most people to the theaters, honestly, get to be in the big movies. And then every once in a while, hey, there's the guy who played Daredevil. He's in the scene for 30 seconds. (laughs) You know what I mean? But he's a good lawyer. He deserves to be. Right. Right, but man, he should have just been in that movie. I would like to see an Aaron Brockovich style, uh, just legal drama with (laughs) with this. No explosions. That would be so fucking funny. Oh my god. We'll get Iron Man five, and then we'll see like Blade on a rooftop. It'll be like, woo, I'm Blade, vampire, and that that'll be it. (laughs) Blade (laughs) takes off his sunglasses, and it's just like, it's you. Yeah, it's me, Gabagool, man. No! <laughs> I thought we escaped him. <laughs> I want the team up of Moon Knight and Blade going after Dracula so that Mark gets his goddamn money. <laughs> Egyptian, Egyptian Dracula. Oh. Shit. Blah, walk like an Egyptian. It's fucking Dio. It's Dio. <laughs> it's Dio. You made JoJo, you dummy. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. What have you done? I just made Marvel JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Let's go. The real crossover we <laughs> never expected but needed this whole time. Is that Blade? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> what is Disney going to buy next? The world. <laughs> <laughs> God, we should talk about JoJo on here. I really love JoJo. We'll talk about we'll talk about JoJo's. Let me watch it first. It's on my to-do list. Uh, put it at number one, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, last last thoughts. Uh, on Too late. The topic. I'm already thinking about the around. JoJo episode. I don't give a shit about Marvel anymore. Oh. This is me. That's oh. Marvel. <laughs> No, go, go, go. No, you, you, you started it. You said okay. I give. Uh, I, I don't think they feel different, um, personally. Uh, I, I, I feel like it's do you want one Marvel movie or you do you want three Marvel movies that you kind of watch for ha- half of once a week? And it's like, oh, okay. Um, it is nice to give these already outrageously long movies a little more time to breathe <laughs> and um if i see another goddamn sky sky laser i'm gonna break what's that what's that writer's name mark mark mark, mark waldron mark waldron and mark Wahlberg. you're on watch too if i see another <laughs> Shit, God the marks damn, aren't safe the marks are, i'm coming after all you fucking marks. don't blame me for the fucking marvel i didn't Marvel's. do it specter <laughs> fishbach Applier, all if I see the same person twice. Goddamn <laughs> sky laser. You, Marks, I got the affinity gauntlet. You're gonna get dusted. Oh, hi, Mark. Uh, Kaylee, go ahead. I agree that unless you're gonna do something very different, where WandaVision is this like, it's a love letter to television, that's mm-hmm. not gonna work as a film, uh, at least in the way that they would want it to versus a TV series. 
I agree on the surface. Like, it is that, like, yeah, it's the same production value and uh, acting ability that they're both going to feel very similar to one another. That currently my problem with the series is that we're setting up all these exciting things and it feels like we're being held back because it's not the time for that now. Yeah. Or once you do something, it's not allowed to be recognized for a while and i don't know if that's because we're still shuffling out what's coming down with phase five or how this is supposed to work but it's it's it feels like not (laughs) manipulative but literally like gaslighting like oh we're going somewhere we're going somewhere and we're pivoting and i don't (laughs) i hope this gets resolved later i don't eh. And, Subscribe and it's sort to of Disney Plus. So it kind of yeah, no, like you're 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 leading me through this whole series for six, seven weeks, and by the end of it, it's that like I don't know. For most of them, I'm like I've enjoyed this, but I don't know if I'm satisfied with this. Mm-hmm. Where you've left things, but even some of the movies more recently, like what you were saying about how they're all starting to have the same flavor. Like Avengers is a very different. Like I see that so differently than the rest of them because Mm -hmm. it's again it's that we have to set up our big problem big sky go boom thing Mm -hmm. but also we just know these characters enough and even if we don't we can put them together and understand who they all are in comparison to one another and even if we haven't watched any of the other movies we can pick it up as we're running along and also figuring out the plot and now we have lost that level of comfort right so you have to watch it's, six it's, things to understand what's yeah, going on in the it's, movie. It's this like we need to start making some decisions about. I I personally have a manifesto against writing and making things for general audiences. Yeah. And it's it's high time that for as big as they are, they can afford to not be. We have to appeal to everyone that yeah. would want to see this. International markets, baby. It's time to reckon. It really yeah. is. I reckon it's time to reckon. Like, it's it's that, like, if you want, like, Eternals was weird, but it was, like, an interesting take and something it was we original. hadn't seen. Yeah. yeah, it's something we hadn't seen in the franchise yet, hmm. but that's certainly not going to be your big blockbuster. <laughs> it feels more like a weird art house movie. And same thing with Moon Knight. Like, mm. it felt like the extended version of um, season three Sherlock when he gets shot, the mind palace scene as he's like shutting down and like trying to protect himself. All of like episodes like uh, four and five felt like an extension of that. And I'm like, this is so trippy and so cool and something Mm -hmm. that I would not see spent this much time on in a movie. And yet, like, I still feel like we're being bookended into something that we have to do Mm -hmm. as opposed to allowing it to explore in these different ways that it wants to in the middle. So it's a mixed bag for me. So basically uh, part of the complaint is that 90% of a Marvel TV show is interesting. And the last episode is always shit. We got to go to the next thing. Uh, It doesn't matter if we finish, just go, just go, just go. Yeah. Yeah, At least the last handful have been like that where it's not like, God damn it. Do we have to do this? 90% of the show is at least a little different and new, and then the last 10% mm-hmm. is the exact same thing. Mm. Big fight. Big, big fight. With big universe. With big properties. With big money. Is that your last thoughts? Big. <laughs> big. There it is. Big. Okay, Emperor Palpatine. Uh, uh, <laughs> do it. Do it. Uh, do it. Do it. Big. Do it. Do it. Do it. Big. Make 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 the last episode big, <laughs> just like the uh, last Star Destroyer I'm, was. I'm big. shutting it. I'm shutting her down. I'm stopping the car. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll talk about Star Wars. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, we have to, well, right? Yes, I, I do love it, but I hate That's it. That's the other contractual <laughs> obligation. Right. I love it and hate it at the same time. Just like every other Star Wars fan born after the year two th- before two thousand. He's born oh. after. Born uh, after. Damn Who it. are you? <laughs> a child. No. But hey, this has been uh, this episode of the Liberal Liberal Artist Podcast. Follow us on our socials. Give me a shout out our socials. Our socials. Yeah. I'm not the one that runs our socials. Make Kaylee do it. 
Kaylee, shout out our socials. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at LibArtistPod. That's LibArtist, no S. Give us a like, give us a follow, uh, leave a review if you oh, would damn. care to do so on uh, Spotify and Devil Podcasts. Uh, we love to know what you guys are thinking of us and if there's anything that you'd like to see us talk about at some point in the future. Let us know. Joe, uh, Joe. Yeah, we've we've already thought of two other things today on top Apparently. of all the other Marvel stuff that's supposed to be coming down the pipe. Uh, later this It'll year. never end. It really won't. It, it will not. <laughs> but we'll try to make it fun for you. Join us next time when we do performance art versions of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure on Brett Kavanaugh's front lawn yeah. to protest things that are happening. Eddie, all Peace. night long, baby. <laughs>